Hi, in a quick video on the uh, second channel, which I'll link in if you haven't seen it, I just um, was playing around with different uh, brands of oscilloscopes and uh, showing to see, well, to see if they alias with a 10 megahertz signal. And uh, Jason Long, I think it was, in the comments, uh, thank you, actually commented, um, is that actually aliasing or is it a just a like a sample beat? frequency because it's 10 megahertz and the internal oscillator is 10 megahertz or the, and the sample rate will be in this particular case it's two gig samples per second but anyway let's uh, reproduce the problem so i've got a 10 megahertz signal there there you go 10 megahertz let's wind the time base down and i'm in auto uh, memory depth by the way i believe let's double check no i'm in one meg let's put it on auto because sometimes um some scopes will uh, have like any aliasing but only in auto mode let's go down let's go down let's go down if we go down to uh, two, five, two. so once we're down to five milliseconds per division, okay, we start to get that alias signal, and there you go. It's two, it's two hertz there, okay, or yeah, one point, uh, it's one, one hertz. There we go. But the uh, hardware frequency counter is still measuring ten megahertz because that's actually there's hardware in there. It's probably inside the FPGA or something like that to, um, yeah, to like feed in the signal directly. That's what a, the advantage of a hardware uh, frequency counter. So that's still displaying 10 megahertz there, but you can see it's displaying a one hertz signal. But you notice like sample rates, five meg samples per second. And sure enough, we're actually feeding in an exact 10 megahertz signal. Well, let's actually change that, shall we? Let's actually change that over to, let's go nine megahertz. Okay, so 9 megahertz, whoop, it changed there. We now got 9 megahertz and it's still alias in there. So let me go down 8 meg, oh, kilohertz, no, 8 megahertz, 8 megahertz, it's still there, 7 megahertz, oh, still there, <laughs> 6 megahertz, and you're getting the idea, right? But I expect it to actually change if we do, to not possibly not do this, if we select an oddball frequency, so let's go 9. Point, I don't know, one, two, three megahertz, okay? 9.123, boom, there you go. We're not aliasing anymore because it does actually have to do with a sample rate, okay? Which is now five meg samples per second. Oh, it's, it's auto, it's gone to auto roll mode now, which is not. Do we want, we don't really want, 20 seconds per division, okay, so it's not doing it anymore because we had an odd, we're using an oddball uh, frequency. So let's go to, I don't know, um, 8.1 megahertz, and boom, see, instantly starts to alias, so... That's, see, so what's 8.1? I don't know, um, get your confuser out, 8.1, figure out why 8.1's doing it at five meg samples per second with one meg points, um, and uh, two seconds, right? It's, it's doing it, right? So 8.1, 8.2 megahertz, 8.2 megahertz is still doing it, 8.123. Do we have to get off? Yeah, see, if you do the 0.123, thing it works so 8.1 <laughs> so 8.1 doesn't do it oh sorry 8.1 aliases okay <laughs> but 8. Point, wait, let, let's go 1 1 okay 8.11 one, one, way there we go there we go <laughs> that's interesting so 8.105 megahertz and you guessed it changes the ripple frequency that's not the correct term but you know <laughs> stick with me right um and yeah but 8.8.1 8 and anything oddball like 8.123 will actually like smooth that out so to speak um megahertz 8.1 to and it see it doesn't do it anymore interesting huh so if we actually stop that and stop is different by the way Look, it actually displays, what it's displaying on the screen is actually quite significantly different. We can actually go back, right? Wee, there we go. There we go. There's your, <laughs> there's, uh, there's your problem, right? There is no modulation on this signal, but it's showing it because it's an oddball. And you can go into the math behind it, and you can go into the sample theory, and you go into the whole works, right? Because this does not have an anti-aliasing hardware filter in it. Um, it's not doing that based on... The sample rate, whereas I think the key site does actually do that. Um, 
So anyway, uh, so what else can we do? Uh, so let's run that again. Let's actually go back to our, uh, what was it, 10, let's go back to our 10 megahertz, okay? Let's go back to our 10 megahertz there. Okay, and we can't, whoa, we're really alias in there. Let's stop, okay? It's going to definitely show up when we stop it. Still shows up like that. But, and if we zoom in, nah, nah, it's definitely. So let's go, what was it, 8.1 megahertz? 8.1 megahertz. Stop. And, whoa. So nine, 9 did it, right? Let's go 9. Oh, 9 megahertz. Didn't 9, yeah, 9 meg did it as well. Okay, so let's go out. Let's go out. Come on. There we go. Right? <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. Look at that. And if we stop that, see, it's actually got, um, it's got the high frequency stuff in there, but that is probably going to, whoa. So you can see that really, oh, and if you scroll through that, you'll notice that that will, if we change the horizontal position, you'll notice that that, well, it just becomes, no, that's very different, isn't it? Whoa, okay, even though it's zooming in at the same point, oh, look at that, just drops the amplitude like that. Funny business, huh? So, yeah, so it's interesting. So, yes, it will actually have to do with um, the input frequency that you've got, and it's going to show up worse if you're exactly on a multiple of uh, the sample rate. But you see, like we were, like, like at, it does it at nine megahertz with two meg samples per second. So we're not, you know, it's not like uh, what's you know, and uh, one sample, one meg points of memory, and what's like what's going on? Anyway, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wrap my head around the numbers and try and sit down with pen and paper and figure it all out. But uh, yeah, there you go. It's interesting, huh? So it does actually make a difference, and you can set it, you know, 9.12345 megahertz, like that, and it's not going to, apparently, on the display anyway, it's not going to alias. So we can go like right down like that. Let's go to one second per division, okay? So this is 9.123 megahertz, and we'll stop that, and we'll go in, and we can still see a sine wave, but it thinks it's 2.5 kilohertz, right? So, yeah, and uh, will that, yeah, that'll probably be based on the sample rate, right? And then the multiple of the frequency you put in, etc. And then, see, it does like, you know, zoomed in like that, it looks okay. And it starts to do funny business, and it starts to do funny business like that. So, there's something. There's something up with the, like the, the display algorithm there because it's like it's just chopping off points like that, right? Because there's only one, one time-based difference between, like two time-based differences between that's 200 microseconds per division, right? So that's, you know, 10, so that's uh, 2 milliseconds total, right? And I only have to go like that and there's, you know, there, there's your 2 milliseconds, right? You're seeing all these little peaks and troughs in there, right? Whereas I go in, in that two milliseconds, in, in two divisions there, is equivalent to that, which shows a perfect sine wave, right? Let me zoom in on that so you can see it, okay? So this is, this is uh, two milliseconds total for the entire screen, okay? And the sine wave looks absolutely perfect, right? But you go out to, this is now two milliseconds like that, and See, look, see, so <laughs> it's all, it's all kamagata, right? It's all funny business, but yes, it ultimately uh, will. It's still, I would still call this aliasing, um, but how it implements itself on the screen in the hardware, you know, in the, the once again, the, 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 the stopped display algorithm might be different to the real time display algorithm as well. So, you know, and that looks to be sort of the case here because if we run that, right? Right, and then if we stop it in there, because we're stopped at a different sample rate, it's go, hey, it's gonna be different again. There you go, look at that, look at that. Wow, look at that, one time based difference between those. <laughs> Funny business, right? And every scope's gonna do this differently. Um, so yeah, but there's clearly no anti-aliasing filter 
in this scope, and I think most scopes don't have one, I think. Uh, geez, I don't know, is there a comprehensive list anywhere? But I think the key side is supposed to have, and at least the key side on the 10 megahertz signal, which is kind of like, you know, worst case, um, then it, it doesn't do it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty schmick. So it does the bit, but uh, it doesn't have, when you zoom in on the key site one, I'm not sure if I showed in the previous video, but it does like show like sampling jaggies and stuff like that. But it just, the whole point is that it doesn't show you a different frequency to what you've actually got. Um, and that, that is the whole point of, you know, aliasing is that it shows a different, different frequency signal. So what do we got? Yeah, we got, uh, so yeah, 10 megahertz like that. And yeah, we zoom out like that and it will show a physically different frequency. So if you captured that, you know, if you weren't paying attention or whatever, and you capture that signal, sure, it's a sine wave and what you've got is a sine wave, but it's, you know, completely different frequency. So you can come a gutter. Hey, this is a uh, thing you've got to watch out for, not just in scopes, all sorts of sampling systems. Um, and then you can get, uh, you know, th uh, frequencies folding back into the, uh, you know, you have to get into the whole signal theory thing and frequencies fold back into range and stuff and can do all sorts of weird and wonderful uh, things when you're doing, you know, analysis beyond just looking at a simple uh, waveform and stuff like that. So anyway, it's very interesting stuff, but um, yeah, it's nothing inherently wrong with the Rigol scope, I don't think, it just doesn't have an, an any aliasing filter in like it seems like most scopes don't. So there you go, interesting. Anyway, thanks for the comment, prompted this video. Catch you next time.